Women's football has seen a huge growth across the world in the last 10 years. And recent figures estimate over 50 million people watch the Euro 2022 final between England and Germany. From a research perspective, though, women's football has been vastly under-researched when relative to the male game. However, with the rapid growth in the professionalism of the women's game, there's been an interest in academic research to guide and inform practice in a variety of areas. With this growth, both in the domestic and international setups, performance testing represents opportunities to develop the physical capabilities of elite uh, women players. While there's a broad range of physical testing means available, commonly applied tests include measures of speed, lower limb power, such as jumping tests, and high intensity intermittent in uh, endurance tests. Therefore, in this paper, the author set out to explore longitudinal reference values for physical performance variables. And this is certainly a strength of the paper as the majority of previous studies are cross-sectional in nature and that is that they're taken at a certain time point, maybe have a small sample size or use players who play within the national age categories such as under 18 or under 20 and so on. Now the cross-sectional nature of these previous studies, maybe they give us good information but they don't account for changes over time such as the year-to-year -year consideration of the player's physical development. From this study the authors collected data for a four year, over a four year period from 479 players aged between 12 and 36 years of age. The physical testing was conducted three times per year at the start of the season, the middle and the end. And during the extensive uh, data collection period, players completed a standardised warm up and specific warm ups before each test. Now the order of testing was as follows, counter movement jump, linear speed and yo-yo intermittent recovery one. From these results, the authors used percentiles to create reference values for physical performance testing in elite women football players. This method is often used to report the relative standing of a particular value within a statistical data set. Therefore, the actual mean average and the standard deviation of the data set are not particularly important and neither is the actual data value. What's important here is where the athletes stand, not in relation to the mean average, but in relation to everyone else. And that's what using the percentile allows you to do. From the data, reference centiles were created, which allow practitioners to gain reference values for the physical performance testing of elite women football players. The longitudinal design of this study is a, is a real strength. And as the authors note, trying to apply centile values from cross-sectional data may actually not be the best way when tracking individuals' performance testing data over time. The authors use an example of how the data from this present study can be applied to track players' progress over the time. So consider a player who achieves a 27 centimetre counter movement jump at the age of 17 and then a 35 centimetre jump at age 21. Using the predicted reference centiles for counter movement jumps suggested in this paper, it can be demonstrated that a player has moved from the 25th centile to the 75th centile. Now, the 25th centile infers that 25% of other values lie below this player and the 75% lie above it. However, when the player is 21, they're in the 75th centile, which means that 75% of the other values lay below and 25% lay above, demonstrating an improvement. The, study, the results of this study suggest that elite women's football players continue to improve their physical performance scores up until around the age of 25, and this supports previous literature. However, while this study gives us some excellent reference values and insight, there are some limitations. All the players are elite national players, which may uh, bias the results based on selection. In turn, this may suggest that the results may be limited when trying to generalise in other contexts. The results of this study only account for chronological age and not biological age. However, as noted by the authors, collecting biological age consistently may not be feasible across a player's career span. Estimation of reference centiles by playing position was also not accounted for, and this is attributed to the sample size. Furthermore, while the research is inconsistent on the topic of menstrual cycle physical performance, the cycle phase of persistence was not recorded, and this has been acknowledged it may have had an influence on performance. In summary, though, I think this is a really good study. Albeit novel, it provides good data to track players' physical performance against reference values from the England's women's national players and contributes to the ever-growing body of research within elite football.